this video I'm going to show you how to open a pool, uh, just pull the cover off, get the chemicals right, you know, start cleaning it up, uh, or you start vacuuming, in, uh, you know, getting rid of the, the algae and the kind of sediments uh, inside of there. And I actually had I had to, to delay this video a little bit because my, when I started to open it, everything was going good, and some of that, then I noticed some tiles coming off. So there's a link in the in the video or the video description here. Uh, for if you want to see that video and then it turned out, you know, I got everything okay and then the um, I saw water leaking or I saw water wet or that the ground was wet around the pool and it turns out when my pipes was broken underneath the ground uh, So there's another video if you want to see <laughs> how to fix a pipe uh, But this again is just the the opening the pool So when I'm first opening it like this, that's just take a look at all the equipment just to see, uh, look for any obvious cracks or any problems. Also identify everything that I'm going to need. So for example, look at the air, uh, I'm sorry, the cleaner and see if there's the, you know, the filter cartridges are in there. Uh, make, look for anything, again, anything obvious, take a look at the electrical, make sure everything's off as well or test it out, make sure it works. Um, so here I have the, the different pumps, the heater, and everything's off right now, just how it was uh, during the winter. And so I'm going to take a look at, again, looking at the, um, this is the multi-port valve. So it's in a winterized mode. It needs to be on filter. Uh, so, you know, move that. I'll probably turn it around just a couple different places just to make sure it, it, it works correctly. You can see the hinges, that it, it drops into place really just before you start working on it, you want to make sure it all kind of, you know, no obvious problems. So like I said, I'm just going to open up the uh, filter here, see what's in there. So sometimes, especially if somebody else has closed it for you, uh, you may be missing things. So, you know, see, this is missing all the filters. So I know where they are, but you may need to go, you know, locate that before you can actually open the pool. So you might want to do this the day, a couple of days before uh, you actually want to do it just so you know where everything is. So, here I'm putting the filters in. These are these require DE, uh, but I'm just you know, reassembling them just to make sure everything's in place, everything works. It goes you know where I'm expecting it. I have all the pieces, so there's a piece that goes on the top, and there's a little filter that goes or a cartridge that goes on the top. Uh, usually go around and just you know look, make sure you know see what's what needs to be taken out. You know how everything is. Uh, this one has I put these uh, those those green floats in there. Not really floats, but they go in. And they, they keep the, uh, you know, ice from cracking the inside. So there's that blocks off one of the ports, but there's also a rubber port in there. And then the next thing I like to go go through is look at all the rubber washers. First, make sure I have them for everything. So there's one that goes on the bottom of the filter. Uh, this one goes around the uh, the filter. This is the, the largest one you'll find, this rubber gasket. Uh, they're usually in the pumps. And then I go through and just, you know, condition them. So there's a silicone um, grease that you can put on these to keep them from cracking. Uh, make sure they're obviously not cracked. This is the filter one. This is the, the largest one. This takes the longest time, but again, it, it makes it a little more supple and it also keeps it from cracking or drying out in the sun. So I see, I like to condition all these and then put it in. So this is the drain. You see that had that yellow washer on it. So this is the drain of the filter. So like I'll put this one in just so it can be f filled up. And then, you know, make sure all the the pumps, so I have a booster pump, that one has a, a drain on it. So you'll be, every pump has at least one. Uh, there may be more than one, so you want to make sure that, you know, it works correctly. So there's the the next pump over here is my main pump. So you see it actually has two holes, so there, there was two different drains. So when it's closed, you know, both of these are taken out so that no water collects in there. So again, make sure these, uh, you put these plugs in there so that they, that uh, the pump can pressurize and to go through and make sure you understand your valves this is a, a heater that i have you can see it's actually disconnected on there so make sure the valves aren't letting water come through and then you know if, if you want to bypass i bypass it right now because i'm going to uh, condition the uh, the pool with you know high uh chlorine and then here's the the valve that that separates the amount uh water from the uh, underwater for from the the drain as well as the um the skimmers and so now i'm ready to take off the cover and so it has these these lock so it has to go around uh 
I found that just taking off a couple of them at a time helps, especially if you have two people, it's, it's a lot easier. I only have, I'm doing it by myself. And so one thing I found is putting a rope as well on the end helps me pull that long side, especially because this is the widest uh, part, part. And so you'll see that I, since if I would have taken every, all of the, the connectors off, it would all, the thing would have fallen into the pool and it'd be really hard. So I found it's easier just to kind of keep it tie or tethered to the sides and then slowly pull them back. But even if you have two people, it might, it's just helps a little bit or helps me. You can see the water is actually not too bad. I've had this much worse than this. I can actually see the bottom. There's, and it's, you know, a little bit of green. There's, there's a lot more dirt than, than it looks like, but uh, it's always good when you can see through the water and it's, and it's got, you know, bluish kind of green to it. So I'm just filling, pull, or finishing pulling all the cover all the way off. It gets hard at the end when the water collects in here, but you want to pull this back. You can see the close-up. It's a lot dirtier than it looks from, from the distance. Uh, but again, it's pretty clear. I can actually see the uh, the main drain there, so that's good. Uh, there's obviously a lot of gunk on the, on the top here, but that's going to be taken care of as well as any algae or anything else in there. I usually just use a wheelbarrow to, to take the cover off because I want to lay it out. It's pretty heavy. It's probably like 60 or 70 pounds, but it's easy just to kind of put it out, take it in the yard. And I, that's why I like to do it in the morning and I can lay it out and just let the sun dry it off a little bit before I start trying to get any of the dirt or, you know, debris that's on there because it's wet and it's hard to get off when it's, when it's like that. So it's easy to, just to let it dry off and then you can brush it off, blow it off, you know, however you need to cover it uh, before you clean it and wrap it up. And if you have a cover like this, you got to go around and, and tie all these down. And there's quite a few of them. As you saw how many that I had to detach. So you just have to go around and just get all these so it's not a, a tripping hazard. Uh, but I like to do it by hand just so I don't over tighten them and, you know, ruin. Because they're, they're into the concrete, but sometimes they're not you know, really tight in there or really secure. So the first thing I like to do is just go and just kind of skim off the top and just get any of this mess out so it's not falling in because some of this falls off the uh, the cover into into uh, the pool as they're taken off. So it just helps just a little bit less because you're going to have to vacuum the ground. It's maybe unnecessary. You can you know let it sink. Uh, but I always like to also like to take a just a initial chemicals. They're usually pretty off, but I kind of get an idea. I'm not going to adjust them yet till you know I get everything kind of you know working and a pump working and it's somewhat cleared up. But I like to just get an idea. There's usually almost no chlorine, but actually it wasn't too bad. I was surprised there was you know, 0.5 in there, so that was decent. Uh, the pH was off pretty bad here. It's not. I mean, it's, it's manageable. I think it was like 8.1, so you know, eh, not great. And I have a list here just I, I referenced that I always keep just so I know. Alkalinity, I think it wasn't too bad. Again, kind of in the middle. Or it's actually pretty decent here. Just underneath, but you know, within an acceptable range, close, just under 80. And then there's calcium hardness. It was almost nothing. I, I think some of my chemicals were old or my, my testing uh, reagent, so I went and got some new ones. Uh, but at this point, I just have a, a good idea what I'm going to have to do. So I like to then start taking everything out. So you see, this is a flotation. I keep calling it a flotation, but it, it it's going to float when it comes out. It's uh, but it, it just keeps the uh, the inside of the skimmer from cracking. Okay, so it's it's flexible. And I like to take out all of the the stoppers for the ports that are inside. So you can see the air came out, started coming out. So you know it was closed correctly. Uh, because there was air trapped in there, so there shouldn't have been any air or water sitting inside that could have frozen and broke. So I like to just go through and just take all of these out. Uh, the main pump needs a basket, so I you know, make sure that's in place. So again, I'm just going through and making sure everything's in place, uh, ready before I start up the pump. And that, and then I get my vacuum ready. So this is what, you can use a, a separate vacuum. I like to use this vacuum that just, that connects to a port like that. And then you put it on top of the, the skimmer basket. And then you can get a good, uh, you can just vacuum it directly into the basket. And you get a you know, good suction using the, the existing equipment. So turn it on, make sure the, the, the pump works. Uh, make sure that the, 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 the valve's closed so that I can see the pressure. They have pump lit up. So everything seems to be ready. So I start it and then just make sh check it out just to uh, see if it starts pulling in some water. I had primed this and poured like a bucket of water in there just so it would be happy so it's not running dry. And I can see, it may be hard to see, but you can see some water coming in that uh, valve right away. So that's a good sign that it's starting off. I got some decent suction starting. So just kind of watch this for a while, let it run through. 
uh, just keep monitoring, looking at, you know, is, is it pressurized? There's still air in there, and it's not the water's not all the way in, so there's no pressure. So I easily kind of go back and forth, you know, watching the filter, uh, the, the pressure valve on there, looking at the pump to see what's, you know, how much water is coming in. Is, is, is there water? Look for some air bubbles over there. I'm gonna walk back and forth. I'm starting to see some water coming out um, of the, the, the multi-port valve, so that's good. So there, we, I know there's pressure. Starting to see, looking at the skimmer, I'm starting to see a little bit of motion, so I know there's some suction that way. So it's all good signs so far. Seeing a little more suction, seeing air get pushed out the return, so that's good. So I know uh, there's some continuous flow of water or some pressurization. So all good signs so far. Like I said, I like to just go start checking all the skimmers, make sure nothing's running dry. No problems, nothing uh, obviously going bad. So I go and I just, like I said, double check the the, the pressure. Uh, it's coming out a little bit, but not if you ever open it, you know, that's, that's a lot higher pressure than that. Uh, and about to start vacuuming. So I want to put DE into the filter just because there's going to be a lot of gunk going through here uh, and just a lot of dirt in the pool generally. So if you have or you're, you're vacuuming, this one, like I said, just sucks it suctions down onto the uh, the skimmer. And then I could just vacuum and you can see just start it's a lot to do, but you just have to vacuum the entire floor. So you're trying to get the dirt, any large pieces, anything off, whatever the vacuum can take. And I usually like to divert all the water over to one skimmer, block the other one off, no uh, vent or drain in the, in the main, just so I can have the, the full amount of suction. And then, and then every once in a while, you can feel the suction kind of going down if you're using this type of vacuum. Uh, so I'll, I'll turn it off, uh, redirect so that uh, just so I can get the basket out, go back over to it and turn it back on. And then so it, it, it keeps it in there and you can see this one, I left it to its full. So it's all, you know, little pieces of leaves, dirt, twigs like that. And I usually go through at least two or three uh, iterations of this. Uh, it's just a lot on the bottom. And then sometimes I like to go check the uh, main pump just to make sure. So it looks like someone got through here. This one isn't too bad. I probably didn't need to clean it out, uh, but just clean out while I had it open here just to get the most suction possible and then just go through and and vacuum everything all, all the all the ground and then uh, you can see it's obvious pretty obvious especially when it's dirty like this what yeah, needs to be done uh, I usually only have to do this once sometimes it's really dirty I might have to do it a second time later on uh, but while uh, after I finish that I like to go through and just start kind of cleaning around uh, some of any of the, the dirt on the skimmers any of the the outside not the the patio or the concrete yet but I like to do that you can see how much uh, is in here. There was like, I think this time I did like three baskets of it. So there was quite a bit. And then I, uh, since it's, it's going pretty good, I just like to, uh, I, I knew the pH was high. So I'm just going to throw that in since the baskets, or sorry, since the pump's running and the water's uh, moving. I just kind of estimating it here. Uh, like I said, there's a lot, there's a lot of junk in the, the pool. So it's going to be kind of hard to you know get everything stabilized, but getting the pH close is the the best i'm obviously making a mess here that i wouldn't normally do uh, there's a lot of phosphates usually uh, left over that's what's making it all cloudy so i use this based on the number or the mound in there throw a couple of the in there uh, and then i start throwing the tabs in there just so i have a constant uh, chlorine with some stabilizer and then i'm going to shock it just to kill a lot of this algae and start clearing it up so i have a lot of this powdered uh, chlorine that i use so i like to just do it around the sides it's the same way I kind of I do it when I'm closing is just to have some you know in the area the pump is going to you know start washing it all around but then I like to put in algicide and clarifier since there's algae in here um, just to start clearing things up you can see actually if you if you compare it to the beginning of the video is it's already starting clearing uh, some of the algae some of just the recirculating uh, vacuuming the floor you know all of it's taking a pretty good toll on the uh, making it blue and I like to start going through and brushing, getting some of the dirt off the stairs, off the tile. Uh, actually, if you see some of my other videos, you know, you'll, you'll see that I, I started opening the pool and then I had a couple issues. I had some tiles falling off I had to fix. Uh, my booster pump, uh, there was a break underwater, so the ground, so I actually had to take a break after this. Uh, but th this, I, I got a lot of the work done here, so it, it helped and it was... Uh, got the pool going pretty quickly so you can see there's still some you know more onto the surface but most of that will be taking care of this the skimmer some of that's fallen in I could probably you know skim it again maybe with a net but you can see it's getting a lot more clear 
it's it looks a little hazy just because I've started knocking every you know uh, everything up the, the the filters running, and I usually like to throw the robot in there if you have a you know Polaris or whatever just to kind of start getting everything moving off the ground so nothing settling settling, and so the clarifier can work. I uh, just and then after this I like to go back and just start double checking make sure nothing obvious there's no air coming in where I would think there's a, a seal sometimes you'll see air bubbles coming in here and then coming out the return uh, you know I got a good looks like a good suction here there's no water there's no air bubbles in there it's got a you know, pretty constant not seeing any great big leaks here I think this one was a little bit I went back and tightened it up uh, just again no no obvious leaks anywhere all the valves are what I expected them or where I expected them to be I think this one was a little bit loose yeah I noticed I could tighten it up a little bit now I like to go back. I think this was actually the next day, and I just started rechecking the, the the chemicals just to to see how they were, to see what else I needed to add. So just kind of basic. Do the uh, chlorine first. Is a little bit higher. I, I probably shocked it a little bit more. Uh, the pH slightly high, but actually you know acceptable range. Alkalinity looks good. I keep again keep my checklist here. It's you know within 80 to 120. The, added some calcium hardness uh, that's you know back within range so everything's kind of coming in to its own here it looks uh, starting to look good cyanuric acid was pretty good a little bit low but it's you know within range and you can see this was a few days later it's actually a week later because I had to do all those other fixes and the robot run is actually after I had to fix the pipe but it's this it was actually pretty blue uh, within two days once you put the clarifier and plenty of shock in there you see pretty uh, cleans up pretty good so uh, this is this is how I open the pool and get it running. Like I said it's pretty easy once you do it a couple times and just kind of follow those general steps of what needs to be cleaned when.